to come over to us. Good. Now then, why don't you give him a ring? I suggest he has lunch with us. Maybe one day next week. Yes, yes, I could do that. Ah, I knew it, I knew it. There's nickel in our basket. Damn nickel. The chairman never repeats himself. Well, what do you say? Copper. Yes, copper. We've been after it for months. Whatever it is, it's big. Better be. I was winning, damn it. Had money on it, too. Wait till these are open. You'll have a lot more money. The thing I was worried about imported in your car. <laughs> Could be good from my taxation point of view, too. If it's copper, it'll be worth another million. Maybe I could take up another thousand shares. Have either of you two thought it might be platinum? Or diamonds? Uranium? <coughs> good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, hello, good good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you, old boy. You each have a letter in front of you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if one may ask. David, ask right and left. Uh, minutes of this meeting, who will be taking them? There will be no minutes today. You each have an envelope. It concerns Harvey Taunton Neal. I knew it. Nickel. Yes, no minutes. A bonus issue. You all voted towards the Taunton Neal takeover. Unanimous, Mr. Chairman. One of our worthier efforts. The Silverlead Mining Corporation purchased the Taunton Neal mining complex for $800,000 as a first payment. Then $800,000 a year for the following 10 years. He's not trying to repudiate the deal. Please don't open your envelopes yet. Gentlemen, when our three top geologists resigned as a bunch a month ago, I became suspicious. They retired. What's wrong with that? The oldest is 35. Suddenly, each comes into a quarter of a million dollars. You don't mean not... Gentlemen, will you please open your envelopes? Your share of the $800,000 deficit will be $180,000. You'll have to be joking, Mr. Chairman. My share's $150,000. What's it mean? Armstrong, according to this, you expect me to reimburse the corporation to the extent of $210,000. You are the largest shareholder. That is your ratio of $800,000. I don't get it. Why should we? May I, Gilbert? A clever... Confidence trickster robbed us. We have been duped. But it was all above board. He sold us a mining company with mining rights. It is valueless. But the geologists... Bribed. That is why their reports were so good. I've confronted Taunton Neal. He signed over all rights of ownership. We'll sue, of course. That is what we're here to decide. What's your alternative? We can report to our shareholders that the mines and leases we've purchased for $8,800,000 are worthless. Or we sensibly make up the original $800,000 paid as a deposit. Don't Neil cannot sue. The amounts in your memos are ratio-wise to your shareholding. Gentlemen, I ask you, what will our corporation think of us if they find that we have been swindled? that our geologists are untrustworthy. That we have been incompetent. Everyone will know what fools we've been. May I have your personal votes? My voice, please. Reimburse the corporation. I'll pay my share. It goes for me too. We can't be made to look fools. Foot the bill, of course. It goes without saying I wholeheartedly agree. While we use up our personal reserves, this crook laughs all the way to the bank. Not quite. By tomorrow, he will be blacklisted on every stock exchange in the country. By the end of the week, America, Paris, London. Harvey Taunton Neal, gentlemen, is finished. It is simplicity, excitement, the adventure of living today. Passé becomes a forgotten word. In this very monolith to modern man, there is a city within itself. Cells operating as professional offices, apartments, high-class shops, even a small elementary school, to say nothing of a specialty hospital with everything. Every street, every thoroughfare designed and engineered for the dominance of tomorrow's living. Avenues will suddenly end. Roads, which will never feel the movement of a wheel. Youth, putting life into living. Here is my concrete thinking. Uh, no, no, no. 
a better word is expression. My expression of how one can enjoy tomorrow's living today. Every home different. Uh, inside, of course. Playgrounds. It is not a garden suburb. It is a garden. And the name of your city will be? Taunton. In the residential area? Neil. Yes. Harvey Taunton Neil. A cog in prosperity. Man, what a presentation. A presentation? Yes. The music bit behind your voice. Mr. Taunton Neil, you don't need me. Ah, uh -huh, but my dear fellow, I do. The services of a highly qualified public relations man is essential. Look, I don't come cheap, but I get results. That's all I ask. Come with me. Now you look down here, Mr. Sidden. Once that was a dreary, dirty market. Darkened, cavernous shops filled much of the area. Today? Yes, I see what you mean about tomorrow's living. Someone had to get this effort off the ground. And he had a good PR man, too. That's why I've engaged you, the very best. First, I'll get you national press. The land developer and project man has arrived. There's brain, culture, and sincerity with this newcomer who's going to make a place in today's history. That's good. On these three hooks, we can get all press media. That's good again. Finance journals, an article by you. What? what? I've got it. A warning to the Australian investor by Harvey Taunton Neal. A warning? Oh, oh, that grabs me. About the cities of Taunton and Neal. They're ready and waiting. Should we get started on both right now? Get this show on the road. Now, here are the TV, radio, and mail campaigns. There'd be over 20 grand tied up in this, I'd say. Uh, 38,000. For how long? Three weeks. Oh, Mr. Taunton, Neil, you're really going to shake this town up. You just read the back page of that submission. A private company invites applications from investors. Two days after the campaign has started, you will select Mr. Thomas Bennett as your confidant. That columnist is a great friend of mine. Yes, I know. You will take him to lunch. You will leak to Mr. Bennett certain confidential information. It will have to be big to make Tom's column. The whisper is that overseas money to the tune of $10 million will be coming into the TN Investment Trust. For a news item, front page, you don't have to whisper about that kind of money. Myself, my associates, are very conservative men, my dear Sidney. Is there anything more effective than the subtle, the ultra-confidential whisper? No. You'll be plagued by reporters. That's why I've engaged you. That's strictly your job. Now your fee. Why don't you wait and see how I work, huh? Your fee will be $10,000 a month. What? That's more than three times the amount I charge you. I want you three times better than normal. There's $2,500 there. I'll pay you that each week on uh, one condition. Which is? My photograph and personal life story never gets into print. But if you want full coverage, it'll have to be. If it does, your contract terminates immediately. Okay, you're calling the shots. My business life is an open book. My personal life... I have a great deal of respect for privacy. Especially my own. Oh, Marguerite. My dear, it's Mr. Sidden, my daughter. Uh, very pleased to meet you. Look, I got a pretty full plate, so excuse me. You go ahead. You got plenty to supervise. You'll hear from me later today. I'll be looking forward to that. The music. Did I bring it in on cue? Spot on. Well, do we have to really go on with this? It's imperative. Once the mining deal was over, you said we'd be set for life. That delusion ended yesterday. But you received $800,000. The geologist. My end was a paltry $50,000. But the $800,000 a year for 10 years. Yesterday, Mr. Gilbert Armstrong challenged me to sue them for it. 
And this is our new venture. Yes. Well, here we go again. You're a good and understanding daughter. Most enjoyable show. Amusing and failure, isn't it? You uh, settling down in Melbourne? It's hard to say. Our American friend isn't very strong on conversation. There's something very phony about him. What about the daughter? I didn't notice anything phony about her. No. The donation from your father was most generous. Daddy's like that. And you will be one of our amateur mannequins, won't you? We'd love to. Good, it'll make our television show. Here we come. And every one of these frocks is for sale. Just telephone the number we show you and make your bid. Every penny received goes to the Hospital Benevolent Auxiliary. And now, the person who knows more about tonight, what you are to see, and all the details concerning this fine, outstanding charity, Mrs. Vanine Towns. Thank you, Bert. Before we commence our parade, I must express our deepest thanks to a person who tonight launched our appeal with a most magnificent start, a donation of $1,000 from Mr. Harvey Taunton Neal. I wonder where he got the thousand bucks from. These truly magnificent models have been donated by that leader amongst Australia's most prominent fashion houses, Gina of Melbourne. This absolutely gorgeous gown I'm wearing is one of Gina's most brilliant designs. The fabulous blue combined with the luxury of gold Durlex. Really magnificently formal. I'm sure you, you'll agree that this is a very luxurious skirt. But just a moment. Isn't that exciting? Two garments for one. The culottes perhaps for more informal occasions. And then just add the skirt and you're ready for the opera. We have a very beautiful young lady to model our next lovely creation by Gina, daughter of our generous donor, Marguerite Taunton Neal. Doesn't she look absolutely stunning? Marguerite is wearing a cream wrinkled dot embossed brocade. Truly beautiful. This lovely design is sleeveless, has a belt, and note the four very attractive jeweled buttons. Thank you, Marguerite. Absolutely stunning. We have many lovely girls for you to see tonight. Our next beautiful model is Diana Carlton. Who said black is not beautiful? Lovely Diana Carlton proves otherwise. Gina of Melbourne especially created this exquisite two-piece for the young at heart and the daring of spirit. Cynthia. Here's Marguerite. The Towns family. What or who are they? Oh, I get it. Trisha's mum and your dad. Well, yes, in a way. I like her very much. She's a wonderful woman. I've known them both since I was a little girl. Oh, yes. But you must understand how I feel. About my father, I mean. There's not a finer woman in this country. He couldn't do better. Oh, yes, but Daddy's so rich, and all my life I've been steering him away from... Well, you must know that the average type who chases after him. Of course, Marguerite, dear. But you haven't a thing to worry about on that score. Mrs. Towns is a very wealthy woman. Oh? In one of our high-fashion creations. Thank you, Diane. My grandfather is the old family solicitor. It's not the money I'm worried about. But you should be. And Valine Towns couldn't be a better match. She must be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. That much? Yes. I can remember Grandfather saying, this was about five years ago, he had handled the sale of Valine's parents' land. It was all left to her, you know. Was it? Yes. 
I can remember Grandfather saying it realized over two hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. On to meet Gordon in the audience. See you. Another expression of youth's vitality, Patricia Towns. Is this beautiful creation by Gina a frock or, yes, culottes, in continental embossed fabric, sunflower yellow. Notice the large bow, setting a balance in beauty to such a lovely garment. Well, I'm sorry, but this was the only way I could talk to you before you take it to supper. Harvey, our little pigeon is quite wealthy. <laughs> no, it's not tied up. Valine Towns is worth nearly a quarter of a million dollars. Oh, the little bird told me. The beach house routine? I agree. I'll organize the follow-up. <laughs> the young people's turn on, of course, silly. We'll come down the following day, uh, Sunday. Zoom in, Daddy. There's a nice juicy hunk of dollars and cents just waiting to be picked up. See you later, you darling sweet Peter. Urgent, Inspector. It is. To them. Drink? No, I won't have a drink, thanks, sir. Well, the uh, reason I called you is Harvey Taunton Neal. It's getting under your skin, huh? In a word, yes. Um, Mrs. Towns? Well, it's not just that. He's too smooth, too clever. He's, he's crooked. Crooked? Yeah. Well, you got anything on him? Well, that's your job. That's where you're going to headquarters tonight. What, at this time of night? Yes, at this time of night. Records. Well, what about the duty sergeant tonight, uh, Sergeant Torby? That's right. Well, he's expecting you. I rang him. Well, what do we look for? Taunton Neal's real name? What makes you think it's fake? Oh, it's just like him. It's too dramatic. Too clever. It's... well, it's just too much. Yeah, but where do I start? Well, you ought to know that a con man's name is really a true alias. Try old Jack Thorby. Get onto the rhyming bit. Start with Taunton first. Try uh, Gorton, Horton, Morton. Short, lengthen, stretch him. And then there's Neil, Feel, Steel, Teal, and Seal, O'Neill. Veal. I'll take Sorby will have hundreds of cross-references. But... What if we don't find him? Well, then I'll circularize the other states. Did you see him on TV tonight? Yes, I saw him on TV tonight. Frankly, Riverton, the... Uh, the reason I'm so concerned is I... Uh, I've got an idea Mrs. Towns might be being made a fool of by this fellow. I don't think so, sir. Well, I'm fairly certain she's uh, spending the weekend with him. Well, good honor. Yes, well, uh, time you were going, isn't it?
Let's go for a walk along the beach. Okay. You make me feel very happy. I'm glad that Harvey don't confuse a, a new friendship with something different. You're so clean. You're so noble. Noble? Yes, noble and wise. And with it all, a serene people. <laughs> You wouldn't say that if you could see me arguing with Trisha and we're doing a cleaning on Monday. You love me. No, not love. I did kiss you, because there comes a time when women without their men have to find an outlet, an expression for their emotions. Is that what you felt? Let's go to the house. It is a beautiful spot. Isn't it terrific? Mm. It's a great house for me, too. It's good for vacations, weekends, and uh, that sort of thing. Of course, isn't it so modern? Sure is. All you got to do is press a button, and uh, everything lights up. Time to choose all the furniture here. Perhaps you'll help me. You earned it long? A couple of weeks. And in that time, Marguerite and I have had two marvelously long weekends. Well, why isn't she here this weekend? Uh, she's coming tomorrow. Whole team of them. Oh, yes. Trish and Cynthia. That's right. That's the bunch. Oh, they'll have a ball. Hmm. That's why I thought it was a good idea. What? Today, you and I could be alone. Tomorrow, I want to drive down the coast. There's a cattle property I want to look at. But Harvey, the others. The others, sir. Uh... The other three couples that are going to be here with us this weekend. Hey, you can have pink gin, right? This house isn't big enough for eight people. Oh. Blast, I forgot the ice. I won't be a minute. I'll, uh, I'll just uh, borrow some from a neighbor next door.
Marguerite. Where are you, honey? Honey? Ah! <laughs> there you are, my dear. We'll soon wash away the dust from driving. Are you sure this house will be big enough for you, Harvey? A little cramped, maybe. Only two bedrooms, you know. Hmm. Harvey, there aren't going to be any others coming, are there? No, there aren't, my dear. Hell, let's be grown up about this. This is not the mad flush of youth with regrets after, not to say anything about doubts before. No. Why don't you, uh, go and get into something more comfortable? Yes. I will make a change. I won't be long. Honey, that's marvelous. I'll, uh, just have another one and then I'll change it to something myself. No, I'm not. I'm not insulted. Well, what? It's just that I... I don't like you that much, that's all. Come on, honey. You can't blame me for trying. I don't. Let's go inside. Let's talk it over. We'll talk it over. But not today. Goodbye, Harvey. I've checked it out, Inspector. This is the address. You did a good job, Riverton. Well, actually, sir, Sergeant Thorby did all the hard work. Mm. Well, you wait here. No, no thanks. Are you waiting for a taxi? Yes, they're few and far between down here. I could take you down to Frankston. Frankston? Easy to get one down there. Well, you're very kind. Yes, all right, thanks. the way to Frankston. Please let me out of here. We want you to stay. Don't we, boys?
beautiful concoction never to pass through the lips of man. And the woman. Hi. Hi, Margo. You better turn it off, Marge. This stuff weighs a ton. Don't worry. You'll have all day to get over it. We can have a ball. How are the neighbours about here on a Sunday? They're swingers, too. Come in. There's a couple here already. Thanks. Do you trust me to abide on your potion of love? That we shall see. than a locomotive. Is it a bird? Is it a man? No, it's Ralph Punch. The only punch that knocked out Judy. Oh. Sherry? Dry Sherry. Stand by ready for transfusion, nurse. Lemonade, the nectar of the gods. Tiny bubbles floating down. Tiny bubbles like pearls in a crown. Ice? Dice the ice. or two. May I use your telephone? Of course. You can phone anyone you want. The police? Yes, please. partners, Tony and Red, and we're going to join your party. We're a bit short on fellas, but we're not this hard up. You're a lanky string bean. Why don't you go and have a good meal? For what? You lousy rat! Stop it, Gordon! If you girls line up against the wall, over there! A lousy rat, huh? Boys, I'm gonna give Gordon his first. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. 
fellows all right. They won't get out. That should keep the little boys quiet. Where did you get that medallion? A lady gave it to me. It belongs to my mother. Hmm. Now I know where you get your looks. If you've hurt her, I'll kill you. Oh, quieten down, baby. I didn't lay a hand on her. Through to D24. They radioed out a description of the car and the uh, and the men. I'll give the bars or something for their corner. No, it's only break, you know. How much do they take? Oh, about thirty or forty dollars. You said they took an overnight bag. Anything valuable in it? A bit of chunky jewelry. Oh, there was a pair of golden pearl earrings. Golden pearl earrings? Where did you get them? Oh, it's a recent gift. Who from? Oh. Well. Harvey Taunton Neal. That phony promoter of companies and... Women. What's between you two, Belina? Oh, look, it's... It's nothing, Dallas. Forget it. Even if I did have to walk home. Oh, anyway, Riverton has picked up a lift from one of the local Dibby cars. They'll uh, pick up Trish from the party. They should be home by the time we get there. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> from the sea. I'll give you slime two seconds to get out of here. The registration plate. Those animals must have crushed the party. We'll give them a party. Anything around the backside. The street I live in, the dead end. <laughs> oh, don't give us that stuff, old paddle pop. Come on, we'll let the boys out. Come on, inside. Get over there. And don't move. Kim! Kim, these lights know something about Mum. She's all right, Trish. Come on, let's go. God's sake, hurry. Almost finished. I know she's on my track, but... Honey, why don't I meet you downstairs in my car? You wait, I'm coming. Uh, you ready yet? Supporter there yet? Any minute, any minute. There he is now. Come in. Oh. Oh, no. So there oh. you are. Hello, love. It's taken me ten years to track you down. Yes. And if it hadn't been for the Melbourne cops, I'd never have landed you. Harvey, who is this, this creature? Oh, Marguerite, meet uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my wife. Wife? That's right. The wife of Charlie Veal. You, you're Charlie Veal? I don't believe it. You'd better believe it, love. I'd say your source of income's been cut off for a while. Not so fast, lovey-ducky. 
He owes me a thousand dollars in maintenance. I might have to have your possessions checked up on. Oh, Charlie Veal, I'm disgusted. Always was a good looking bloke. You know, when he was young, he was one of the best street fighters in Fitzroy. Have you ever seen him fight, love? Oh, you poor love. You've been overseas so long, I bet you haven't had a decent solid meal in months. You come home with me, and I'll make you a nice tea of pig's trotters. <laughs> What is Armstrong up to this time? Taunton Neil's going to sue. We'll have to dip again. Hello, you fellows. You know what this is all about? The letter routine's on again. Yes, yeah, so I notice. Hello, Jules. Hi, gentlemen. Good to see you. Well, what's this all about, Jules? Well, in good time, in good time. The chairman's on his way. It's another one of his unofficial calls. I'm afraid I'm out. Don't be stupid. We've got to be in. Unless, of course, you want to be the laughing stock of the country. Ah, well, Gilbert. Hello, Hello. Jim. Hello. Uh, please be seated, gentlemen. I think this is yours, Jules. Oh. Again, no minutes, Mr. Chairman. No minutes. Before you open your envelopes, and thank you for your courtesy in awaiting my arrival. Not at all. Company etiquette. Thank you. Gentlemen, when we last met, ex officio, should I say, our news was somewhat disturbing. $200,000 disturbing, as far as I was concerned. Our meeting today is the opposite. The opposite. Opposite. The opposite. opposite. Yes. In those envelopes, you will find checks from the Silver Lead Mining Corporation for the amount you reimburse the corporation, plus 25%. Plus 25%? As a small capital gain on your investment, or should I say, your understanding. But, Mr. Chairman, why? What's made the difference? You remember I told you that I had the most exhaustive investigation possible made of the area we purchased from Taunton Deal? But the country was worthless. Not a trace of nickel, copper, silver, platinum. Nothing. Not a decent mineral in the whole 400 odd square miles. Well? Yesterday, the research team reported direct to me. And? We own the largest reserve of natural gas in the southern hemisphere. Mr. Chairman. A vote of thanks to Harvey Taunton Neal. Ah, here, 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 here. Here. And something else will surprise you. Huh? About Marguerite. She's not his daughter, you know. How did you know? Well, we girls have our ways of finding out these things. That she was really his mistress. Well, Dad looks so surprised. I wonder where they are. Oh, they'll be here in a minute. By the way, uh, where are your earrings? He took them back. Marguerite's? Well, in that case, uh, you might find some use for those. I won't be taking them back. 